And welcome to another episode of Sunday Setups. I'm your host, Covell. I go by the name of Institutional J. And today I'm going to be taking you guys through the markets as usual every Sunday, providing you guys with an insight to what we're looking at for the week ahead. So with no further ado, we are going to go straight over to the website and we're going to let you guys know that if you're thinking about getting involved in trading, if you're thinking about trying to understand how to invest, then check out litcapital.co.uk. We've got some amazing mentorship programs um, available for those who are interested in a one-to-one -one mentoring service. Or alternatively, if you've, got a bit, if you've got a bit of experience already, or you just simply want to learn in your own time, wherever you are, whenever you want, then we do have an academy on our website, which you can get access to. So it's very important, guys, you make an inquiry by heading over to our packages page and, of course, getting started with us here. So with that being said, if you're watching this video on YouTube, pause the video, head over to the like button and head over to the subscribe button if you haven't already and smash that button. OK, to celebrate 1000 subscribers, we gave away a brand new PS5. We are also in the process of um, filming a documentary, which we will, of course, be revealing the winner and you guys will be able to see. But again, guys, if you're watching the video, be sure to smash the bell for notifications so you can get up to date with the next video that we're going to provide because you know the vibes, it's lit sad. So with that being said, we are gonna go over to the economic calendar and see what's actually on the horizon for the week ahead. Now, as you can see, the week is pretty dull. Okay, we did have an exciting week just gone. We had NFP, we had the pound, um, and we had the Euro interest rate. So the week was really hectic. Um, so this week is quite the opposite. Um, we can see that we've got CPI uh, and we've got GDP for the pound. Um, and of course, we've got CPI for the dollar. So this week, I mean, if I, I, I'm checking only the high impactful news, but I've checked the lower impactful news and there is some CPI for the pound. Um, and there's also some for the dollar as well, com uh, also combined with GDP. But as you can see, really, um, from a glance, you know, there isn't really too much going on outside of the pound. So, you know, this could be a week where we see um, some more moves for the pound. And of course, that's going to take us into understanding what we're looking at for the week ahead with the dollar. Now, the dollar's kind of been inside of a range. Um, and thankfully, a couple of weeks ago, we had a live stream call where we mentioned that we wanted prices to come lower. But ultimately, it was only to come lower uh, in order for prices to actually push higher. And thankfully, what we're seeing is prices push down. It hasn't quite touched this daily candle down here, but price has pushed down um, into our institutional level. And it does seem like price could push higher. However, despite this arrow that I've got here, I wouldn't be surprised if we have prices pushed down lower. Uh, reason being, I'll move this camera over here. Uh, reason being is because price has been high for quite some time and we have been expecting lower prices in order for us to get that continued push to the upper room. Shout out, Ned. Um, so with that being said, we're also approaching a new month as well. Um, so of course, with us being inside of a new month, we do also want to see prices um, push down or should I say we want to see prices pull back before it catapults into the ultimate direction that's most likely going to push um, and we'd like to see the dollar climb higher so uh, you know for that amongst a few other reasons a few other uh, fundamental reasons which members in our community are uh, often kept up to date with we do want to see a pullback on the DXY so that we can see a higher uh, higher push uh, with the dollar now, moving into gold, gold has kind of been a bit stale um, of late. You know, it hasn't really given much moves, but it has given us some. Um, and with that being said, we did have a nice short down from this daily candle up here above the 1847. If you remember the last outlook that I uh, featured on, I mentioned that I wanted to see prices break the 1800 level. Um, and we've finally seen a push beneath that level. Um, and, but, but, but what we had seen is a push beneath that level into another daily candle where we actually saw prices turn around and what looked like price was going to catapult upwards around the NFP times. We didn't get the move that we thought we would get. So it has been quite flat with gold. And it's you know needless to say that there is obviously something brewing um, for the simple fact that gold has been uh, quite still for quite some time now. So we are looking to see what can happen with gold. Um, but more importantly, I want to bring your attention to USD JPY because, of course, this is inversely correlated to gold. So, you know, if UJ goes up, gold should come down, vice versa. So really, it's probably making more sense to understand the direction or the strength, should I say, of the dollar and the yen 
to have a better understanding of gold. And we've got this monthly lip block at the moment, which we haven't seen price um, close above at the moment. So we've had a failed, we've had we've had price fail to close above this monthly candle, which could strike us to to, to resume in more of a bullish, uh, sorry, more of a bearish stance. But when we're looking at uh, UJ on the daily, we can see on the daily that we had a nice uh, rejection down here where price pushed into this daily candle twice. And ultimately we are hovering around the area where we want to see price close above. So I wouldn't be surprised if as the week opens up that we do get a push up with UJ um, to later on get a push down. My weekly bias on UJ, despite it being so bullish, my weekly bias is for us to actually get a push lower. Now I know this does look quite bullish and you would say, well, Cavell, if this is, you know, looks like it's going up, why are you trying to do the opposite? Well, my reasons stand back, uh, stand behind this monthly candle. We haven't got a break above it. And because we haven't had a break above it, I'm expecting us to get a push down lower before we can potentially get a push higher. So I would like to see this equal low down here, the liquidity areas taken beneath. Um, and of course, that would support gold. If I just come back to gold now, that would support gold pushing up to at least fill this daily imbalance area up here as well. So with that being said, we can understand that if these things do happen, then we should get you know an eventual move on gold. Um, but needless to say, if this doesn't happen, then of course we want to react. Now, uh, one of the things that I was looking at with gold was the downside potential. Can we get a push lower? Now, it's very possible. Okay, if I just go onto a blank canvas at the moment, we can see here that we have had price pull back into this weekly candle. Uh, and ultimately, we can get prices actually push uh, pushing down lower. Now, when I've marked up silver and I've gone through silver with members in my community, especially some of my students, there's a lot of downside potential with silver. And that's also one of the reasons why I believe that if we don't get this push up with gold sometime soon, we can most likely get a push lower um, to play out of a candle beneath before we get the push higher. So if I go on a weekly, we can see that we do have a nice pool of liquidity below here. And we've also got this weekly candle that we could get a reaction from. But, you know, when you look at the price now, this is as low as 15 1580. So, you know, to some, to hear that we're at 1800 at the moment, or for us to go down as low as 1574, to some people, that's probably unthinkable. Um, but just in regards to this area of liquidity, this rests around a 1675 handle. So it's, it's quite possible that we can get a move down. I mean, we've been in the range, gold has been consolidated for quite some time. So until we get gold break out of the range, whether it's to the upside or to the downside, then it's most likely suspected. Um, that we will get a continued consolidation push. But needless to say, if you're inside the Discord, we'll be keeping you guys informed, up to date, and of course, on our live streams, which take place Tuesday to Friday. We're also tackling gold on the smaller timeframes, giving you guys a deeper understanding on you know, where we're trying to sell and of course, where we're trying to buy. So that brings me to the last pair, which I'm going to cover today, uh, which is GBP USD. Now, <clears throat> if I just go back onto the daily, Okay, we had some fun with the pound last week with GU. Um, we also did, of course, have the NFP results. And, you know, we didn't really get that NFP Friday that we thought we was going to get. But again, needless to say, regardless of us not getting the, the, the NFP Friday that we thought we would get, we still did get something. And um, I've been waiting for, for GU to actually push higher and tap the 62% for quite some time. Um, it eventually tapped the area and it's, you know, thankfully given us an opportunity uh, to be able to take a short off of an old uh, an old uh, short setup that we previously uh, marked out a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I do think that if the DXY does push up, of course, this would come down lower. But with there being so much news around the pound towards the latter end of the week, it's most likely that we'll actually get um, some strength in the pound. Uh, but depending on the results, of course, it could go either way. So really, this outlook this week is mainly about seeing how the market opens up on Monday. Um, there isn't really much to go off of at the moment based on how 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 um, how juicy the week has been last week. You know, there's been so much that's happened last week that the markets probably do need to make some moves, whether it's false moves or corrections. The markets definitely need to make their moves for us to be able to analyze. So if you're not inside of our community, it's very important that you guys get access to our Discord. It's for free. OK, we have a free uh, access to our Discord. It does come with limited available, uh, limited functions. So you're not able to access our live streams or our daily trades, but we do give you access to some of the litmus.
Um, and with that being said, of course, it's very important, man, if you're trading right now, to be involved with a community that's trading the way that you like to trade. Um, we don't trade with any indicators. We simply use price action. So we understand that a lot of you who are trying to understand, you know, smart money concepts and institutional trading, of course, if you're looking for a community, we're the guys you're looking for. So with no further ado, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. It's been a short one, but most importantly, it's very important if you are inside the, the Discord, we are going to be providing you guys with a midweek outlook this Wednesday to give you guys an up-to-date outlook on what's happened so far since the markets have been open. That's most likely where you guys are going to get some trading opportunities. So thank you guys for watching. Again, if you haven't, please make sure to smash the like button, share this with a friend who you think would find this valuable, and don't forget to subscribe. With that being said, I wish you guys a good evening, good day, good morning, good afternoon. And always remember, every day is money day. Peace.